Hello, this is Adam Began, and I'm the host of Historically Haunted Show, where I talk about some very rare historical and haunted locations that I visited. I also interview some of the very best in the paranormal and cryptozoology field. So tune in every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Paranormal King Radio Network. And prepare to be educated about the unknown. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John Kajushka, co-host and lead investigator for Canada's TV show, True North Paranormal. You're listening to Adam Began on the Historically Haunted Show. Keep it creepy. Hey, historians. Welcome back to another great episode of the Historically Haunted Show on the one and only Paranormal King Radio Network. We are live here on this beautiful Friday night, (coughs) excuse me, August the 19th, 2022. And from the soundbite you heard, and of course, that was one of the first soundbites we ever used here, um, it's from a good friend of mine, even though I've never met him. Um, he, we've messaged each other a lot. Someone through, when my car accident, when I've been depressed and homeless was there for me, messaged me. We've had a lot of conversations. Um, I've done some recording with some music with him. We'll, we'll get into that too. Anyway, from uh, true North paranormal and the thunder boys with a Z production incorporated all the way from Burr, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, John Kazuska. What's up brother? How are you? Hey man, how's it going Adam? I'm doing all right, buddy. How you doing? Good, my friend. Good, my friend. It's good to finally kind of, I mean, you've been supporting me and we've been talking to each other and helping each other out for so long and I've never had you on. And uh, that's bad on my part. It's been almost a year and I'm like, I got to ask John. And uh, <laughs> yeah, man. And, and like we we're talking pre-show, we're kind of getting to know each other a little bit better and stuff. And I want the world to know, um, what is your role at, for those that don't know, which are probably not a lot of people in this field. I'm sure a lot of people do know you. But for those that aren't list that don't, know that are listening in britain and mexico and canada and all reaching america all the spots we reach here live what exactly is true north paranormal and true north paranormal tv uh, well true north paranormal is uh it's canada's uh, we we like to joke around saying it's uh canada's a- uh, answer to all the american programming down there you know we <laughs> we highlight canada and <laughs> yeah you know what i um there it is. There's the Canadian A, by the way. I love it. Right? Jeep dropping it. Man, yeah, for sure. Eh? I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man. So we're, I, I don't know. We, we like to believe we're the answer to a lot of the uh, American TV shows. Cause dude, there's a lot of great shows going on down there. And you know, our, pro- our producer, Dean Trumbly, I mean, he was kind of like, you know what? It's, it's Canada's turn. Let's get Canada on the map. So you know, we, we've been oh, doing yeah. this for a number of years. Uh, we're starting to film season three now that COVID's finally easing up. And, dude, I'm, I'm excited. Like, I'm so Amen. excited. Amen. Well, I don't think a lot of people realize because everybody's stuck on, like you say, America's the big temple. But guess what, guys? Uh, every single inch of land pretty much can be haunted, if not historic. And Canada's got a lot to offer that a lot of people don't know, especially in your neck of the woods. There's a lot to cover as far as history, mysteries, murders, crimes, and just hauntings and UFOs. Bigfoot, there's a lot. Am I right? Canada's got just as much to offer as anybody else, you know? Oh, totally. Canada's got tons. I mean, you really think about, I mean, let's touch on the history aspect just for a split second here. I mean, the settlers landed in eastern Canada, right? I mean, everything happened in east Canada when they crossed the ocean. So, I mean, that yeah. whole eastern part of canada is just man there is just so much history there alone i mean you know the maritime provinces about are alaska, just you know, the great frontier alaska was part of canada and sold in a treaty people that have, have have gone through canada to get to the north pole like admiral perry from maine who have tried to get to the north pole first canada's got so much i mean vikings landed in canada and then you go to new brunswick side where you got the fucking what's that show where they're digging in the cave they're digging in the mountain or whatever it's called they're looking for pirate oh, treasure oh god yeah, I know you're. T- I can't remember the name of the show, man, but I yeah. know what you're talking about. That's on my Kurt, side, but yeah. Canada's bigger than Russia, and and there's so much to cut. Well, what is the name of that stupid show where they have the hole in the ground? <laughs> it's uh, gonna it's bother the- me now, man. 
Shit, I'll remember it when I'm almost asleep tonight. Uh, <laughs> they, and it's like the Knights of Templar <laughs> gold is there, and there's Vikings and and all that stuff. So yeah, I mean that's a small part uh, of it. Now it's going to get us all thinking. But I mean, yeah, yeah. Montreal. I've been to Montreal before. I got drunk on St. Catherine Street. I mean, there's old churches there. There's tunnels in the streets. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of big sightings. Uh, Canada's known for monster sightings as well. You know, UFOs too. Absolutely. The uh, UFOs. I mean, the Ogopogo out here in BC. Like I live in BC now, and uh, Ogopogos are like monster. It's huge. I mean, there's so much folklore around it. I mean, First Nations uh, talk about Ogopogo a lot. So I mean, yes. Oh, Heather Witchin, Kevin Eady, my girlfriend, Heather Witchin. Uh, Curse of Oak Island. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> yes, there it is. I'm not going to have to stay awake all night trying to remember uh, now because it totally would have happened, man. Oh, man. So, so man, uh, shit, I mean, I want to talk to you as a friend. Of course, we got people in chat right now listening live. Thank you, guys. Carlos Nunez, UFO Fred, Fred Richards from Maine. He's a big, uh, he works with MUFON, or used to at least. King, Charles Fulton, Melissa Keen, Heather me we're all in chat and i'm sure there's people listening that aren't in chat it's hard to do both so thank you guys for tuning in uh, john what's one of your latest projects that you can talk about what's something that's that's just uh, came out or maybe up and coming uh well are we talking about atmosphere on cage or are we talking about true north here i guess both let's yeah let's just get it all both. There. okay all right all right so right now true north is working on some pretty epic locations we'll, we'll start there uh, one of the okay. epic locations is actually uh, O'Keefe Ranch uh, out here in BC. The place is huge, and it's got so much history tied to uh, pioneer times and stuff. Um, we're gearing up to go back to Send in BC, where we had a pretty nasty tangle with a pretty nasty entity. Uh, we done it twice. Uh, the first time was nuts. It was off the hook. Just incredible activity documented on camera. Uh, you know, the second time. Uh, we went back with a smaller team. There, there's four of us. There's myself. There's my wife, Karina. Uh, there's my producer, Dean, uh, who's my best friend, my cameraman, and the owner of Thunder Boys, and his uh, wife, Denise Brockledge, uh, is Karina's cameraman. So the four of us went back to Sand, and, and oh, what's there awesome. is not nice at all. Dude, it, wow. it is like the creepiest thing, though, yeah. So we're going back there. I'm um, going to go tangle can with this guy. Can one I stop more time. you real quick on that? Because I got a question that actually yeah, yeah. me. Um, what are the, your roles on your team? Do you guys all do the same thing? Is one of you guys a medium? You, are you guys all like historian researchers? What's your I'm curious? Good call. Good call. Okay. So yeah, I am the lead investigator. No, no, dude. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, I'd be happy to go. I could talk about this stuff all day. So I mean, um, oh, yeah. yeah, my. I'm I'm the lead investigator for True North Paranormal TV show, uh, and Karina is a psychic medium, which means I can't go and buy a guitar. Uh, otherwise, she's going to know about it before I even buy it. Um, so <laughs> that, that kind of sucks, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing like getting busted. Guitars and cars, forget it, man. Oh, I love uh, it. Dean Trumbly, yeah, Dean Trumbly again. He's the owner of Thunder Boys Productions Incorporated. Uh, up until this year, he was the host of his own TV show, uh, Federal's Trigger Effect. They just actually wrapped their oh, final season. Wow. Um, yeah, and Denise Brockledge, is, she handles the finance with Thunder Boys, but again, she's also Karina's camera person. So, wow. yeah, so that's, so you get that's a what bit everyone of does on the show. Yeah, they're all investigators, kind of techie. You get your medium on the team. You know, I'm sure everybody does their own research. So that's cool. And you, And I love that you're not 14... 15 people doing pizza parties on a Friday night. Nothing against that shit. I, I, kinda, I try to make, not make fun of people. But you really only need a good four, five, maybe six people tops for a team. I feel like less is more because you have less interference. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah. Exactly. Like usually it's me and my girl and maybe one or two other people or otherwise just us two because I just hate someone coughing. That was me, guys. And it's like, oh, just I hate tainted evidence, you know? Yeah, exactly, man. And that's, see, when the investigating happens, it's literally me with Dean following me with a camera. Like Karina doesn't come in. Denise doesn't come in. It's always just wow. me. So, I mean, my biggest challenge is is not tripping in the dark. I mean, contrary, I, I mean, you know, it's not as scary as you see on TV. I mean, the hardest part is, oh my God, please don't let me kick that bench and fall because the camera's going to see it. And they're, you know, there's an outtake, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, it's a lot of Karina's psychological. Lucky. You know, it is, I just man. don't want to, totally to step on an old rusty nail at a sanatorium that hasn't been fucking cleaned in 500 years, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, man. And dear God, if you trip on the thing, like, oh my God. Uh, yeah. Karina's lucky, man. I always tell Karina she's lucky she gets to film during the day. And it's not fair. I'm just saying, I'm whining here a little bit. I'll have to do my podcast with. I'll have to do my visual podcast on Tuesdays with you and her and have you both on someday. As I can do. Absolutely. 
maybe have your old team and we can talk more because I love to see just different points of view. Of course, radio sh- in- is intimate. No one's focused on what we look like and we reach a lot more people. And I love my radio show, but I love having one of each because it's different. I usually have guests on both. Um, so anyway, so sh- should I kind of cut you off because you were talking about what you were doing um, with the project, which is kind of hush hush. But where can people find True North Paranormal? You must be obviously on you, Facebook, YouTube, well, TikTok. And stuff. Yeah, you can find us on YouTube. You can. I mean, I myself have my own uh, TikTok, which uh, honestly, I'm rarely on it. Social media and me, we're we're kind of friends, but we have a love hate relationship, right? Uh, my wife's got her TikTok. She has this crazy thing where she does to, you know, so-and-so they're my friend. You got to check hers out. You'll laugh. I guarantee it. Um, yeah, but you can find true North on we're exclusively on Paraflix now. So, uh, cool. every, yeah, dude. Oh man. They're I'm big telling you, the Natalie, yeah. Jones, Natalie Jones has got to be the coolest CEO I've ever seen in my life. Like she's probably one of the most supportive people. When I first came to her with atmosphere on cage through COVID, I'm like, Hey, can I put atmosphere on, uh, on Paraflix? She's like, well, yeah, of course. Whoa. You know, like, yeah, oh. no, I, I love Paraflix, dude. Like, yeah. You know, it's funny. They're really up and coming. And I saw that you shared this on your true North page and right away, um, someone who I'm friends with, who's liked and shared and supported my shit since ever francis weber right away she's like congratulations can't wait to listen tonight john i think she even wrote on the post john's good people i'll listen and then natalie jones put love 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 they're so pumped yeah. about you being on the show that you shared which i appreciate a lot of people are on my show and don't even share which i kind of get confused because i'm making myself well, to publicize yourself as well but teach their own so i see you are pumped about coming on which makes me more happy too um real quick we got a great question from Carlos Nunez, who's tuned in now pretty much every show for a whole cool. year. Appreciate you, Carlos. He says, hey, John, what's going on? Hope you're having a good night. Um, are you available in the States by any chance for work or if someone needed you for a call? Uh, what we do when it comes to the U.S., because there's so many amazing teams down there that are really reputable, incredible, we let American teams handle things close. Uh, when it comes to True North coming down there, it's not that the show wouldn't, but we're trying to kind of keep to Canada specifically because it's kind of untapped territory, right? Like when yeah. you really look at the grand scheme of things and the big picture, but I'll tell you, dude, we have a lot of good friends down South that we've met through the show and at Paracons and stuff like that. And there's some really good teams down there. So if anyone ever needed help, I mean, I'd be the first, I mean, reach out anytime and I'll be happy to put you in contact with a team that I think is reputable. And it's just my opinion, of course. Yeah. No, when you know, see, it's funny because you follow me and you know, I'm almost in Canada for God's sake. I am like 80% French Canadian from St. George uh, by my, uh, by Montreal. <laughs> um, but being in Maine, man, you know, as you see, I'm doing, I'm going to all the Stephen King filming sites. I'm looking up Native American Wendigo uh, sightings and burial grounds and stuff in Maine. And I'm kind of doing what you do. I, I mean, I love Lizzie Borden's house. I love Salem. I love Gettysburg. But yeah. And even New Orleans is cool. I've never been, but there's so much more shit. And and I want to be the first one to find that something where someone goes, holy shit. So I'm trying on my YouTube channel. I'm trying to go to discover cool shit. And people seem to dig it. I think lesser known shit people are really coming into now and, start, and starting to want to know. Do you, do you think that's fair? Uh, yeah, man. I No, I, I have to agree with that. I mean, um, I mean, you could, so many locations, you kind of do them to death, right? I mean, it, it's not a knock on anybody at all. I mean, hey, if we could all get into these epic locations and investigate them, I mean, the biggest thing that we're all doing is we're trying to further the field, right? Like whether you're part of a TV show or whether you're part of, you know, a team or an independent, you're still trying to further the field and, and kind of expand our base of knowledge. And the more of us that get into locations, the better off there are. Uh, because we might all get different evidence. I mean, one day I might get disembodied voices that says I was murdered. And Adam, you could go in the next day and you might catch a full-blown apparition walking through, right? I mean, these are just pieces of evidence we might get, right? So that's what's really cool about everybody doing these things to death. But at the same token, man, I want to go somewhere where people haven't been. Because when I do that, it's like, okay, I can really further the field because now I'm going in with an unbiased mind and I'm not looking for anything in, in specific or in particular, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, that too. And I think, um, you know, I mean, like I said, I don't want to name draw places, but places I'm going to name draw places I've been because no one can go, Oh yeah, I went there. 
But like I went to Lizzie's and these motherfuckers get a lot of money. Same thing with Eastern State Penn, first penitentiary in the world in Philadelphia. I went to, they get a lot of money. But then you go to the Richard Jackson house, 1664, the oldest house in New Hampshire in Portsmouth, and no one goes there. It's not on a, a it's on a list to be saved because there's no money coming in for tours or overnight investigations because everybody wants to go to the same old, same old and give them every fucking dime they get and buy their magnets and their coffee cups. And like I say, dude, I'm right there too because I went to St. Albans Sanatorium. I've been to Gettysburg and I love the Ginny Wade, all that shit. But when you really think about it, dude, there's not hundreds of places. There's thousands of historic and or yeah. haunted or both, you know? And yeah. why doesn't this place where this, like the Axe Murder House in, in Iowa, why doesn't that get as much love as Lizzie Borden's? It's not as well known. People don't want to go to Iowa. I don't, whatever, but what, what makes a place more haunted, quote unquote, than another place? I don't buy that shit. I think it's just yeah. more well known, you know? It, it, I think it, it is actually, I mean, that's kind of the thing that I've noticed is, is a lot of things really are a popularity contest, right? Like, Unfortunately, um, yeah. you're, you're, yeah, let, let's say this location's bigger and it's had more sightings than this unknown location. Well, people want to go for the sightings because I mean, dude, it's, it's the new mainstream really. If you really think about paranormal yeah. stuff. It reminds it, me of local main music because I used to be in a band. And it reminds me of like little, like you can't play Brunswick because you're not from Brunswick. And if you are, we're going to critique you because you're not metal because you sing clean and fucking oh jesus that's not an orb it's dust and just people critique people's shit to an extent to where no one wants to share their stuff and it's kind of sad it's bullying in a way really you know yeah you know i i agree i mean i'm i'm uh i'm the type where if you ask my opinion i'm going to tell you what i think but i'm not just going to give an you know an unbiased or uneducated opinion in my opinion of course uh, and my Perfect. opinion is just that, just my opinion. So, I mean, if you send me something and I put it through the programs and I start really looking at this, this orb, well, I'm going to be looking for like five or six different things to rule out. It's an actual orb. And I'll be honest with you. I, I think about 95 percent ish. I think I'm up around that have actually just been uh, explained particles in the air, whether it's dust, I a agree. bug, uh, refraction of light you know, things like that. But there are some that I haven't been able to explain either. So I'm not willing to say that orbs are not paranormal. Yeah. I mean, you could tell your typical bug or dust particle, but then once in a while you get that little beam that kind of tap dances where it's kind of like, okay, well maybe, but even that's kind of, hard. what the fuck are you going to do with it? You got to bring that to court or science and prove that they throw that out as evidence. So you really want a hard hitting shit, which I don't know, which brings me to my personal question. What do you, what, what's your go-to for, um, I don't know, like the SLS camera. Do you use spirit boxes? Do you just sit there and use a recorder? Like, what's your tool of choice or weapon? I should say. Um, <laughs> honestly, dude, the <laughs> the biggest thing that I always bring is my brain. Uh, the tech is all great stuff, but it all has their flaws. I mean, the SLS. I mean, a lot of people love the SLS because you can get some credible hits. But the trouble with the SLS is, even though it's dark, you're going to cast an IR shadow. So sometimes you're picking yourself up. So, you know things like that. I mean, it's things you have to be very conscious about and you know, that, that's important stuff. So the biggest thing I always tell people is I bring my brain. I mean, you know, it's not my SLS, it's not my SB 11 or my SB seven, you know, it's not REM pods. You have to have a good clear mind in order to actually deduce whether or not what you're seeing is something that can be explained and you have to do it on the I fly. Love I love that because also too, you're, you're not even looking at what's in front of you, which could be a ghost and you can actually see the form. You're looking at the fucking metronic in your hand, which is like, well, what the fuck? And that's why I always say it a lot of times I go, 99% of people that see ghosts are either laying in bed, making a sandwich. They're not using stuff to see them. You know, most of the witnesses are just yeah. doing regular shit. So that's why I, I love yeah. that answer. You're using your brain. That's probably the first I've gotten out of that because that's, that's, that's credible. Um, shit now so what's this, what's one of the most demonic or like like legit like you almost shit your pants or said i'm not going to do this anymore type things you must have ran into something well, dark i i have actually okay so i'll tell you about this one because I've, I've actually got clearance to talk about season two episodes now um so it was actually in sandon and i was i was kind of talking to you about sandon before um so kind of a little bit of a history on sandon uh sandon was uh during the big gold rush in, in the u.s it was about as wild west as you could get we had silver up here where you know gold was a big thing down south and sandin had like 30 something bordellos and a whole bunch i mean it had everything in it the you know the great makings of a crazy haunting and it didn't let down so the first time we were in there we were in this place called the white house not like the white house down south obviously it's very very small um you know 
and uh, we heard this. Like uh, a lake something, something started like happening. A, like a big lake out there, probably or something, right? Is it like, like, no, no. Sandin's got uh, Sandin's got a stream going through, it, and what happened to the town is this: uh, the stream actually wiped the town out. So oh. I guess there was a flood and there was a deluge, and yeah. Wow. Took the whole main street out, and yeah, I'm not sure of fatalities at the time, but I know oh, that uh, sand. And after that, yeah, dude, it was it was wiped out. So I mean, you know, so Hal and Vita uh, own the property there, and well, Hal Wright is the owner, Vita is his partner, and they're working their butts off to get sand back. So they're they're really cool and you know very accommodating, especially for True North when we were there. They were really cool. I mean. You know, I can't say enough good things about Hal Wright and Vita. They're just amazing folks. And, uh, yeah, the second time we went back, we thought we had actually, at their request, gotten rid of what was in the White House. Uh, and that's something else we don't like to do either is just get rid of things because everyone's got their own belief systems and religions, and you really don't want to infringe on that. So doing something like a crossover is kind of risky, right, without talking to the owner and finding out if they even want you to because it's their property. Uh, yeah. But long story short, yeah, um, yeah, we went back a second time. I guess what was there didn't uh, get bounced from the place. And yeah, he was still there. I guess a little girl was walking down what is now, well, would be called Main Street Sand. And, and she saw this guy standing in the window looking down at her. Um, and she told Vita this. So Vita right away got a hold of us. She's like, hey, you guys want to come back? Because uh, whatever's there, he's back. And uh, we're like, yeah, sure, we'll go back. Yeah, dude, it was nuts. Um, so we went back there. I, we just finished wrapping uh, Greenwood, which is the most haunted city I've ever been in. Literally every building has activity. Uh, the mayor there was phenomenal for the show. Uh, people there just treated us great. Um, but we went back there. And, I mean, it was what? Three days later, we were we went from Greenwood, B.C. to Sandin, B.C. So, you know, we were still still kind of in the swing of things and you know kind of didn't have a lot of layover time in between filming schedules so we were ready to go our night hours were good to go and we walk into this place and uh you know we're, we're in the white house and this place where we heard this big loud boom and no one could ever figure out where the epicenter of it was um i guess this thing hadn't left so I went and stood beside this doorway where we got this crazy thermal hit of this black figure. Um, I believe it's going to be in the episode, actually. Dean was talking about that. But I stood Ooh, there and I started feeling, yeah, dude, it was cool. Start feeling this weird pressure behind my eyes, though. And uh, I guess I was talking and I was trying to do segues. Now, with True North, I do segues for everything I do. Uh, you know, so if I'm standing in front of this doorway, it's something like, okay, so I'm going to stand in front of this doorway right now. This is where we had all this activity before. So I'm going to see if I can just draw it out again. Something along that lines, right? Yeah, something yeah. so simple. Um, so I'd start my segue and I'd freeze. And Dean, who's my producer and cameraman's looking at me. And to me, I didn't freeze. I was talking normal. Uh, but yeah, he's waiting for me to start talking. And then I'd start talking like nothing happened, like no time had passed in between and stuff like this. And he got all this stuff on camera, dude. So I ended up telling him like, man, I got to leave. I'm, I'm feeling sick. Something's not right. So I got outside. I thought I was going to throw up and uh, I guess I'd been attacked. Um, yeah. So that was probably the most nasty thing I've ever dealt with since I started investigating. And dude, that's, that's like 20 years. Wow. And you're saying that whole town's pretty much on a hotbed of activity, it sounds like. Well, Texas, Greenwood, Greenwood right? is. Gr Greenwood yeah, is. Greenwood is completely a hotbed of activity. Sandin, it's that one house. And I'll tell you, man. Oh, oh um, okay. Yeah, L Lorraine Warren said something back in the day, and it actually triggered a thought. Um, she said that the Amityville house was as close to hell as she's ever been, and she'd ever cared. Yes. Okay, well, the White House if there is indeed a place such as that, it's the closest I've ever been and the closest I ever want to be. Wow. It, it wow. was nuts. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd love for other investigators to go check it out too. Um, wow. You know, when, when he says BC, weird. guys, he's talking British Columbia, which is up by Canada, by like Washington and Dakotas and shit like that. Um, BC, British Columbia is where, where John is out of. Um, and it's untapped land, man. Damn. I guarantee you there's some fucking people yeah, Googling this shit, because uh, I, I will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. Google send in BC and you'll see some pretty crazy stuff. Like, you wow. know, you'll see what the town was to what it is now. And, and I mean, even reach out to uh, the send in page on Facebook. I mean, I know Vita, you know, runs that herself. She'll, she'll give you lots of history on it. She's, she's great that way. There's places out there dying for the attention and not because they want to be known, but it's because they want to be saved, put on the preservation list, you know, uh, built up the code by giving up tours. I mean, you know, we got so many places in America, man. How many times do people go to the fucking wet Eastern State Pen and just all these places? I love them all too. Don't get me wrong, but like that's one thing I dig, man. I like John says. I love going to these places where people go, "Wow, what's that? Where's that?" I love going to it like I'm the first person that's ever been, you know. And I think the spirits did yeah. that. Instead of getting weekend warriors every weekend, bringing a Ouija board, stage, and gummy bears, you get this one guy coming in by himself and the spirit's like who the fuck's this cat why does he want to talk to us and next thing you know man they're gonna give you the gift you know oh totally um, dude that, that yeah. I, yeah and it doesn't let down either i mean sandin it's got uh three buildings i'd say where i can say that there was evidence that i i couldn't debunk um you know so the three buildings there's a white house there's a brown house and there's the old city hall uh and city all three hall. of those buildings yeah, old city hall. It's it doesn't look like much, dude. But I'll tell you, that place was crazy. It had a jail uh, and a courtroom in it, and <laughs> that's the floor we slept on. So, yeah. Oh, dude, I people would yeah. pay. I'd pay for that. I look for that shit. Old jail. See, that's the thing. A lot of people don't know. Uh, it's not just New England, of course, which is older. But like he's like like John is saying, Canada's old. I mean, even out west, town halls in your town was used for meeting halls for for war uh, assemblies where people got hurt during war they brought them there to heal their makeshift hospitals jails churches so much shit went down at town halls in your town not just where you are everybody if you look at your town hall man that's where it started and that's where you to me that's one of my favorite places to go is the city hall town hall especially if it's an old school like oh yeah um we get oh, some yeah. questions coming in again John, real quick. For sure. Uh, Heather Witchin. For sure. Uh, Heather Kennedy Witchin, my girl. She does Witchin Life Guide show every other uh, Wednesday on Paranormal King, her radio show. She says, hey, John, uh, are there any unique local cryptids in your area? I know you mentioned one earlier. That would be, yeah, that would be Ogopogo. So uh, in the Okanagan, you know, let me try this again, because this is apparently a mouthful. And uh, if I, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of O's in there. It's that, like I'm yeah. talking with marbles in my mouth, man, right? <laughs> um, so we got the Ogopogo, who's in the Okanagan Lake. There, I just spat it out. That was a lot, dude. Say that five times. Um, uh, that is probably one of the most notable cryptids uh, when it comes to British Columbia, Canada. Uh, of course, um, you know, living in the mountains, uh, we have a lot of um, forest and woods and such. So naturally, the other flip side to that is going to be Sasquatch, of course. So, mm-hmm. yeah, those are probably the the two big things that uh, I'd say are very prevalent in British Columbia, Canada. Okay, I think I've heard of flying birds, but maybe it wasn't BC. But I know Canada's got flying like pterodactyl type giant birds, thunderbirds. They call them in a certain part. It may not be that part, but makes sense. So Bigfoot Sasquatch comes from. I mean, they say Wisconsin. I mean, just because we see the line as Canada and America, these fucking guys don't got passports. They truck through the woods, you know. Um, yeah, you know, dude. Still- it's, it's, you know what? The the oh, way man. I see it is the border. The border is just a border, man. I mean, Canada mm-hmm. and the United States, we're we're one nation, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, Absolutely. there's great people on both sides of the border, man. I got nothing but love for the folks down south. Oh, I love North America as a whole. I mean, yeah, I think we're great. Even Mexico, I don't have a problem with them. I think it's a great big unity and, and as much as europe's old and get their stuff a lot of them are set in their ways nothing against them i'm italian too but i love north america <laughs> yeah fucking a for sure um king ross Rapazzo, the the king paranormal king he talked to you before the show he says hey john great show he wants to know if stanley park is haunted stanley park i've not had the uh I know where he's talking about. I haven't had the privilege of investigating there, though I have heard rumors of things being there. So the trouble is when we go to film outside, True North doesn't actually film outside because, I mean, there's way too many contaminants. You can't lock an area down. You know, uh, there's there's no way to rule out noise. And it doesn't matter how many noise filters you use in post, you're never going to get rid of some of that noise. So, I mean, whether it's wind or traffic, there's just no way to actually say for sure. That's true. That's true. You got to deal with a lot of outside noise. Ross says, thank you, guys. Great answer. 
Uh, thank you, King. Thank you for all you do here at Paranormal King Radio Network. Thank you for allowing me to, every week I handpick my guest. Um, he lets me talk and do whatever I want. He tells me I say, yeah, I say fuck more than any other host. <laughs> he lets me smoke <laughs> my weed and do my thing, and he's a good dude. He, he knows I do my Stephen King filming sites, and I do my murder sites, and I try to put Maine on the map. I try to dig up. There's so much witches buried in Maine and different shit, so I appreciate you, King. Um, he says, uh, question off... Um, Mixler, it's another listening site, M-I-X-L-R, Ken Bull. Thank you, Ken. He says, great show, guys. Um, tuning in kind of late here. John, does John and his team investigate um, outside of the TV show? Do you guys do, like, house cases or just fun things? Without we will, yes. Yeah, we will. Uh, we're very meticulous on what we take. I mean, the big thing that I want people to know about, you know, Karina and myself, is even though we're part of a TV show, we still are in it because of the same reasons we started out. So, you know, if someone calls us and there's something going on there and, and we're like, okay, well, you know what, we've done our research, you need help, we will go. I mean, we're not going to ever refuse somebody that actually needs help and it's legit. Uh, you know, at the very least, we'll make sure that we, I mean, again, we know a lot of very reputable teams. It's one of the luxuries we've had. We've got to meet some really fine folks. Uh, so at the very least, we're able to actually get somebody in there that can help them out. Uh, if we can't make it ourselves. Cool. So, I mean, we, we definitely respond to people, man. Absolutely. No, that's cool. I noticed sometimes I have guests on, you're like, oh, so-and-so, he's a good dude. Or so-and-so, she's a good dude. And, you, you know, uh, Francis Weber, like I said, from Paraflix out there with Doug uh, in, in Ohio, speak very highly of you. And I forget who else I had on a couple weeks ago, spoke very highly of you. I forget who it was. Uh, Jay Hill, maybe? I forget now. But, um, but yeah, man, uh, I appreciate that. You know if you're in Maine, we got to collaborate. You know I'll show you where, oh, man. where mermaids dude. are seen. Shit, I'll bring you to places and we'll do some cool shit in Salem. Even whatever. let me tell you, man, if if I ever get down to Maine, I'm you're taking me on the Stephen King tour because I'm such a Stephen King nerd. It's not even funny. Oh, like, someone finally appreciates yeah. it. No, I know people do. I shouldn't say that, but I just dude, I, was the same I am high so jealous, kid, man. And I just yeah, That's enough. I I fucking grew up and i tell you man it's you know seven years old you watch the shining and you start reading king books and you realize you went to the you get the same english teacher prudence grant the same teacher he had and you see his book in the library in a glass case because you're the last person to take it out with the cue card stephen king you know and you just start going to graveyard <laughs> yeah. shift and the langlinier sites and you know, pet cemetery and and this maximum overdrive and it's you start becoming infatuated man it's how and shit. I, I want to meet the fucking cat so bad. I want to get him on my show. And uh, I, that's cool man. you think that because I've been trying to freeze frame the movies and find Gage's grave and uh, and find oh, a pet yeah, cemetery yeah, yeah. house. It's, it's, a, it's a work and I, I'm not getting paid. I just get a couple YouTube hits, but fuck it, man. It's about fulfilling my life. And, and one day someone Absolutely, will catch dude. on and fuck it. Until then, I'm having fun. You know, I ain't hurt no one. I appreciate you like that. Just have I fun, man. Yeah, before. man. Totally. Totally. I mean, dude, the only thing that... Uh, I think has ever actually terrified me that Stephen King did was bloody Cujo, man. I, I don't know. There's something about Cujo. I had an old neighbor that had a St. Bernard, man. And every, after I read Cujo, I was like, man, I want no part of you, dog. You oh, know, just, oh, just go oh. back to your house. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, they slobber too, right? So it's like, oh, yeah. have rabies? oh my God. Yeah. They, yeah. And if, Fucking dogs eating a license plate in the beginning or something like that in the movie. Like, oh god, bone like a fucking jaw, like a like a shark. I mean, jaw like a shark. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, oh, no, I, that I don't know, man. There's something, and the movie doesn't do it justice, dude. Because I read the book before I saw the movie, right? So I was like, wow, just yeah. wow. I, I don't ever want to Saint Bernard ever. <laughs> you know, St. Bernard's are like John repellent, man. <laughs> yeah. Then they come up with Beethoven a couple of years later. It's like, fuck you, Christmas movie, Beethoven. Yeah. You're, you're just yeah. Cujo in disguise, man. I know what you're doing. <laughs> that is the same way my girl. She's like, oh, his books are so much better than the movies for the most part. I mean, the movies are great, yeah. but they didn't, the books don't. It's just phenomenal, you know. And oh, it's his mind, shit, right? That, oh, my God. Honestly, dude, he's he's the, he's the uh, Edgar Allan Poe of our time. He's the... Uh, H.P. Lovecraft of our generation, you know, in my opinion, who's a better author? And Rice, maybe, God but rest her soul, but, you Yeah, know. maybe, but, I mean, there's some, just something about Stephen King, man. Like, his mind's just so, it's always going. I love it. It's, it's. I get hooked, right? Like, I start reading his book, and next thing I know, I'm, like, 250 pages in, and, and you know, we've been driving for two and a half hours. I'm like, wow, where the hell did time go? 
you know. <laughs> and you lose yourself in the characters, which is cool. You, you lose do, yourself man. You do. It, and you almost picture them, and you see the movie, and it's like, ah, that's not really how I pictured so and so or whatever. And sometimes it is, but yeah. eh, you know, your mind goes away, which is cool. Um, I'm gonna touch on some fun shit here. We got about a half hour left. It's going by rather slow, which is good. Um, yeah, we're having fun with it. I think it's not hard. What's one of your go tos for uh, a ritual meal after a big event or pre event? What's like a big steak dinner, <laughs> barbecue? No, man, I am like the most basic guy. Dean actually laughs at me. Uh, Dean, Denise, and Karina actually will go anywhere and they'll be getting something like steak or something like that. And I'll be like, Yeah, I'll, I'll have a burger. Just give me a cheeseburger and fries. And that's, <laughs> that's my go to. <laughs> I'm so boring that way. It's like, Yeah. Just cheeseburger and fries. That's all I want. Simple man. No, that's a simple man. You, you're not compliant. You're not like, oh, you don't have this. Well, I can well done. You don't make a big production out of it. It's just feed me and then I'm fucking done. That's I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah Billy, Earl, Billy Earl Huxley, the world leader in secrets and sacred symbols, checks in. Thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate you checking in, Jimmy, from Nesper's a good shit. He says hi. Um, what about uh, music, man? And I know you, you and me have actually, for those of you who don't know, John does um, some producing, so to speak, kind of collaborating uh, for some Spotify stuff. And I actually give him some gang vocals. If you guys don't know what gang vocals is, when you have like 15, 20 people in the background singing a verse, it's almost like a hardcore yeah. type thing. Like, and I did that for it's, him. And uh, that was yeah. kind of a cool collaboration. So how, how long have you been into that type of stuff, man? How long you been like doing this? Music well, I, I've been doing the whole band thing for, uh, well, I, I picked up my very first guitar at, at age five. So I've been playing ever since then. I got really hooked. I heard Tony Iommi, and I was like, I got to play like him. Uh, you know, I don't want to play Yankee Doodle. Yeah, man. But then, but then it got even cooler. Yeah, right? Like, I love my Sabbath. I mean, you know, Dio era is probably my favorite. But then I heard Dave Mustaine play, and I'm like, oh, my God. I want to be like this guy. So I really got into thrash metal, right? Yeah, man. I, and Megadeth is awesome. So I got really into thrash and I was playing that. And I actually, you know, after I did my original band stuff, I actually got into Megadeth Tribute Act and we were touring Canada, US, Mexico. And my job was being Dave Mustaine day in and day out. So out of a month, we'd be on the road for three weeks. And uh, yeah, I'd been do I did that for a couple of years. And then uh, I guess uh, just out of this, this one time, my son was playing hockey and I was in Mexico City and he won his only hockey championship ever. And I was like, okay, this is literally taking too much for me. So th this is it. So I actually called my agent that day and I'm like, this is the last tour I'm going to be on. It's taking too much for me. Um, but I didn't feel complete. Even after I walked away, I was like, I'm missing something. So I'm doing this atmosphere on cage thing, which uh, it started out as kind of my goodbye to music, my thank you to everybody who ever listened to our music or came out to watch me. You know, this is what it's like when I play drums and bass and guitars and vocals all by myself. Um, and it, it kind of evolved from that. Like, uh, it's kind of like you were saying that song, uh, that damn devil. I've got yes. literally so many people I've got, um, you know, Chris McKinnell's on there. You're on there. I've no got way. Natalie Jones. No fucking way. Yeah. Chris McKinnell's on there. Yeah. No yeah, shit. yeah. 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 He's saying, uh, yeah, he's, he's saying the same stuff you are, man. So it's, it's in there. I mean, I've got Redford ghost hunters in there doing it. Uh, Natalie Jones. Preach. I used to sing in a band. Too, yeah, so I was more about those damn devils, like high pitched. Yeah, you see, that was fun but it, it worked though, dude. It was yeah, dude. It, it worked though because if you actually listen to the whole blend of everything, you can hear you screaming like some guy lost his marbles while everyone's saying, "I love it." The de I that damn it. devil. Oh, yeah, dude. It was it, it. it was so really hard. epic. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it was really cool, you man. Like I'm, I'm so excited. Like even, even Brandon Crody from Paranormal and the Fun House, and you know Doug and Francis from oh. Beyond the Veil. I love those two so much. They are such amazing people. Group. But even they're on it. Yeah, man. I, I mean, it's great. I mean, I had so many amazing folks from Paraflix step up and go, yeah, let's do this, and and just folks like yourself that I knew that I respected. That I was like, look, man. I mean, I, I am who I am because of all the people I've ever met. You know, it, it, it has nothing to do with me as a person. It's like without all the people I've met along the road, I wouldn't be the same person I am. Right. Wow. So I'm, I'm very humble that way. Yeah. So why not include a lot of these really cool people that I've had the pleasure of knowing? Right. So, so I did that. And now that album actually, uh, yeah, man, it, it's, it's, it's the way it should be. Uh, that album's now evolved into, uh, well, I have some friends of mine, um, Mel and Travis, and their their little guy just passed away. Uh, he had an accident, oh, so uh, it's turned into that. a tribute to him now. Yeah, man. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, me too. I was uh, I was pretty sad for him, but, uh, but yeah, music bonds uh, people, man. Music is the medication we need. I feel music has saved me from yeah. suicide, from depression. When my mom died, I turned to music. Whether it's Slipknot, David Allen Co., um, Mariah Carey, I mean Diane Ward, whatever, whatever it is Cypress Hill that can get me my mind off of life, dude. Music, God, God is number one in music. Satan, unfortunately, Lucifer was was the god of music. He, he used to play music for for God. You know, Lucifer did until he got cast out of heaven, or so the story goes, at least. And music's been around since the dawn of time. And um, sorry, yeah, I went off subject. Man. That's deep. I like no, that no, it's cool. Because, it's cool. Yeah, music's deep, man. Music to me, you know what? We all have this thing. And I, people always ask me about when I play guitar. And it's like, look, when I'm playing a guitar, my guitar is my translator. It's going to say things that I can't vocalize. You know, I can't find a way to articulate or Absolutely. articulate the right words. So, so when I look at music as a whole, it really is a universal language. It doesn't matter what language you speak, what your main language is, what your second language is. I speak three languages and music is a fourth, you know, it's the one that I can play a note to somebody and they'll right away look. And it's like, they understand you. Right. So it's really cool. It's a very, I find it really intimate actually. Isn't it weird sometimes if you're feeling something like say you and your lady are fighting or something bad's going on or whatever, then you hear a song the radio or maybe your cd that plays at the right minute it's like get the fuck out of here the words just fit and then you guys make up maybe kiss have smoke a joint or maybe you cry good cry because you remembered someone at that minute to me music is that element man i don't know that's it's deep to me yeah you're right people like us feel that man yeah man i think everybody on the planet feels it that's just it it doesn't matter what music you listen to whether it's rock country folk blues hip-hop bluegrass yep. whatever you're into it doesn't matter the the thing with music is it all has a backbeat. It all has notation and, and it all talks to you it, it, regardless of whether you're a fan of that particular music or not, you know, th those notes are always going to strike with you. So it, it yeah. really is, man. It's, it's a beautiful universal language. You know, we can all agree on what we love or disagree on what we love, but at the end of the day, it's still bringing us together to talk about it. Right. Amen. I hate when people say, I only listen to good music. Well, fuck you. There's no such thing. It's music you like. It's no such thing as good. You can't go, these guys are better than them. There's no comparison. Music's its own thing. ACDC doesn't sound anything like boys to men, but in their own rights to their own fan base, they are the shit, man. You can't compare yeah, man. It's not fair to the music. man. It's just not. I like Pink Floyd when I'm feeling mellow and stone, but if I'm kind of pissed off or I I want to get the, I'll put Pantera on, man, and have that little chip on my shoulder. It helps me. Yeah, dude. Up, you know, yeah, cool. dude. I know when I was playing, when I was a junior playing hockey, there's a song by Megadeth. Everyone should Google it. Uh, just because I, I love the song, it, it actually made me fall in love with Megadeth. But it's called My Last Words. And the very first time I heard that song, it's off the P Cells But Who's Buying album. And oh, I bought this it. tape Perfect at a garage album. sale, man. Oh, yeah, dude. God. I bought it for a quarter at a garage sale. So oh, I plugged it in God. on side two. Yeah, man, I heard my last words. I'm like, oh, my God. So every hockey game I ever played from the time I got that tape up until I was about 17, I had my last words playing in my headphones every time. Oh. So, I mean, yeah. And, and I made AAA. Like, I was a AAA junior hockey player, and I made it pretty high. Uh, so, I mean, my last words, man, that's that's what did it. My job was Fucking to hit negative, people. And man. That's... Shout out to Extinction. Yeah, Blues man. In Asia. I mean, I get to see them play in Boston by Fenway, Thousand Blues. Uh, Meshuggah opened up. Meshuggah's a fucking nut band from like Switzerland. They're fucking insane heavy. But then Megadeth came yeah. out. It was like 2015. And Dave came out. That fucking cat can do solos. I mean, he was Metallica at one point, but he's just unreal, huh? That's killer. That's oh, like man. Your... He's so something you, else. You that's, 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 your, that's your, your pinnacle, or that's like your. I don't know. Is that like your 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 fave? I guess would you call him like one of your top guys, Dave Mustaine? I, I would say Dave Mustaine is really the guy that uh, I, I would say he's my favorite uh, musician. He kind of pointed me in the right direction, and I mean, you know, I, I went through a lot of crap when I was younger. When when my hockey career suddenly ended, I went through a lot of really dark things, and uh, Megadeth was there. I'd, I'd listen to Megadeth. And it was kind of what helped get me through. And I actually remember this one time. I actually met Dave Mustaine in Winnipeg at the convention center. And uh, he, him and Marty were getting on the, an elevator, and I was Marty a kid, so I was yes. all starstruck. Yeah, yeah. So Dave's like, "What did you think of the show?" And I was looking at him like it was good, and that's all I could say is it was good. I'm like, <laughs> <Wow."> "Starstruck," <laughs> you know? Yeah, totally. It's like I just 
in my opinion, I just talked to a guy, Harold is a God as a kid. I'm like, what? what? Of all the things I could say, man, like it was good. Like really, I shake my head at that. <laughs> Well, better than say my name is John or something. You mean at least you got to a call? Yeah, but like I like sandwich. I like yeah, I love lamp. But I mean, you, you do. I mean, that's huge, <laughs> that's huge to me because I met Rob Zombie and of being a singer and loving horror and death metal and being the first time I ever saw a concert was the Ramones and White Zombie and Lewis and it was Ramones farewell tour oh. in Pet Cemetery, which was fucking dope. And then White Zombie came out and played you know uh, Devil Head and all that shit. And then he went to Rob Zombie and I met him on Halloween or in Lewiston and I uh, came out dude and, I, and I'm like he's like oh you're the one that did that do you want a t-shirt and I was like oh, I want to hug you I'm not gay but I want to hug you I didn't know what to say and I said that to him like a fucking idiot 1998 and he <laughs> gave me a hug and he came back with two t-shirts and a drumstick and said I did a great job and patted me on the back and I felt like I was gonna piss my pants because I you don't yeah, want to hold people in that respect and I try not to in this field because I hate Fuck the assholes in this field. I hate people that think their shit don't stink. I won't work with them. They're yeah. not gonna know where I go. I don't. I have no. I have no ass to kiss. My mom's dead. I don't care. But when it comes to like yeah. wrestlers, <laughs> wrestlers and musicians, I kind of melt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair, cool. man. You met Dave Mustaine, dude. That's wild. I would have drooled and probably passed out. That's well, killer. the worst was I, I got to tell this one too because this is probably my biggest Dave moment. It was probably my most intimidating Dave moment. So I've met Dave over the course of the years. I've met him a total of four times. And one of them, uh, the tribute act was playing in Milwaukee. So we were in Milwaukee playing and in walks Mustaine. And he had two other guys with him that I'm not sure who they were. They must've just been guys from the crew and then Drover walks in behind him. So I'm impersonating Dave Mustaine. Well, Dave Mustaine's watching me impersonate him. I'll tell you, dude, there is no weirder feeling. It's like, oh my God, if I blow one vocal note or or if I screw up one solo, I'm going to completely insult this guy. So, you know, he stuck around. Uh, he came up at the end of it uh, and he had a scowl on and I was like, oh my God, I screwed up something bad. And then he smiled and he gave me a hug. He goes, that was awesome. Thanks. And then he left. I was <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> coolest Dave moment ever, man. Coolest Dave moment ever. That's pretty dope. I like that. I like that. Um, I do want to mention real quick, guys, too, just because Ross and me are both wrestling fans. Uh, John grew up in the same town as uh, as Chris Irving, which is also known as Chris Jericho from the band Fozzy, pro wrestler, who I got to meet. And didn't you say you were your friend with the school with him or something like that? Right? Uh, I had a cousin neat. that went to school with him. Yeah, That's what it was. I had That's a cousin that cool. went to school with him. Yeah, you've met him. He's pretty humble dude, too, which is cool. He's in the- Chris Irving is pretty rad, yeah. Yeah, he's got a lot of cool tattoos. He's in the metal. He's in the ghosty stuff. He's actually had a couple people on his podcast, like paranormal type people. Um, what's what are your bucket list places that you want to go? Whether it's America or London or France, it's what actually in London, dude. I want it top two. You said, yeah, give me two or three. Make it, it fun. All right, all right, let's make this fun for sure, dude. Let's do this. All right, yeah. so the biggest one has got to be the Tower of London. I want to do a solo in the Tower of London for two nights. Oh. I don't know why, but I'm telling you, man, <laughs> I would just go nuts being in the Tower of London. Um, so that's that's number one. Number two is actually Centralia, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm a huge Silent Hill fan. I love it. I love the concept of how Silent Hill came to be, which was Centralia. So Centralia, yeah, I want to go do a solo in. Yeah. For, for those of you that don't know, real quick, uh, that's where the, the pavement is splitting in two because there's like natural or unnatural coals underneath the ground that are still burning for like 30. It's almost like nothing but trouble. And we see kind of yeah. two where nothing, shit's burning underneath the ground. And people to the point where I think only like two families live there. Yeah, out of like, yeah. like 20,000 people or something, like two houses remain because of radiation. Yeah, dude. No shit, dude. That's killer answer. <laughs> I've never heard that one yet. Wow. Yeah, no sense. Well, okay, so my wife Karina and I, we we actually wanted to go there and we got married for our honeymoon, but oh, I mean we're guys. like, yeah, not right now. We we will. We're still going to get there. Uh Ghosts <laughs> and Silent Hill was kind of an icebreaker for us, so. <laughs> so, yeah, we're still going to get down there eventually. And then dear god, there's so many places where would I pick to do a third? Believe it or not, it's not Dracula's Castle. I know I'm I'm sorry if I'm letting anyone down here, but I really don't care about Dracula's Castle. No, maybe in your it's, top 100, but weird. not in your top 5, no. <laughs> yeah i mean i'd say maybe in my top 100 i want to go there but let's see where else where else would i want to go i'm trying to think man there's really only two that are really on my bucket list dude honest to god i will go just about anywhere 
where where there's supposed to be a haunting and I will go and investigate it like well let, it's let, not, let me ask you, crazy well, well John let me ask you this and what about America is it New Orleans Gettysburg Maine California Salem well I would say because of the historical content I'd love to uh, do Gettysburg as an investigator absolutely yeah. uh, New York itself I mean I love New York I mean I love all the stuff that's that's in New York City it's it's nuts to go visit but I don't know, there's nothing that really jumps out at me there. And, and you know, see, uh, New Orleans, see, like, I guess I want to go there. Maybe an old West guy, maybe like, maybe like down south by where the old ghost towns are, where the miners, because you were talking about that earlier. You seem like you're kind of yeah, in yeah, dude. Like Arizona, maybe, like Billy the Kid used to hang out and shit like that. Oh, man, I'd go anywhere Billy the Kid was, absolutely. That's if there was something he was supposed to be, I would I would be there like a dirty shirt. If you called me up and went, dude, <laughs> get on a plane. I have this place locked down. We have it for a week. I'll be like, dude, I'm clearing my filming schedule right now. Oh, you know? you're like me. You just want to yeah. go and see the. I want to see where I want to see where Bonnie and Clyde had sex. I want to see where fucking where 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 they had a, a pace turnaround in the Wild West between fucking the Alamo or something like. I want to see it all. Life's too short. Yeah, We're man. See it all. I, I, I want to I want to learn as much history as I possibly can, if that makes sense. And I want to investigate yeah. the ghosts that are supposed to be there at the same time. Why not do two really yeah. awesome things at once? Yeah, that's why I tell people go to a historical place because if it's not haunted, you at least get the history part, which is always mind blowing. Knowing that a doctor yeah. lived there, or they had a mo- back then they had like dude ninety percent of places anything that's like older than eighteen fifty probably had a cemetery on the property and family oh, plots yeah. back there. So there's so much cool shit. Why go to the same fucking sanatorium 35 times a year? I really love the Conjuring House. I know people have gone to the Conjuring House in Connecticut 50, 60 times. Yeah. And on the way there, they pass Plymouth Rock and they pass the Bridgewater Triangle, and Lizzie Borden's house, and and that's just, and, uh, HP Lovecraft. Uh, I've been to HP Lovecraft's grave and final home where he wrote his last book and died in Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, I don't man. know any fucking buddy that's been there yet. I can't think of one of my friends. Why that not? would be damn cool. I, I would totally be up for that. If if you were like, hey, man, bring the gear. Let's go check this place out. I'd be like, for sure, eh? I See, like that. that. That's what I had earlier. We got Canadian, eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for sure, eh? <laughs> totally. You got that wild spirit, you and your woman. You guys. Uh, we do. Mean, you know, like I tell Heather, one day I could be in a wheelchair looking back going, fuck, I wish I went there. I want to go to the places now. I want to go to where movies yeah, were filmed. Man murderers were and unique things where crying ladies are seen in cemeteries these black statues and shit you know right? yeah dude i, I want to see all that stuff i want to be able to retain it because i mean who knows we, we don't know if we come back again you only live once so i want to experience all i can and i want to meet the people on that. the way you know what i mean because there are so many that. really cool people out there that's why my pictures are always paragraphs. I tell you the year of the place, what the place is, where the place is, the town, the state, what the place is known for. On the bottom, I put 2022. That's where I've been. Hashtag Adam Hizzer and Ghost Hunter. So if I ever have Alzheimer's or 30 years from now, I, I want to tell people that I've been there. No, you haven't because people love to call you out. You've never been there. Prove it. Go to fucking Iowa, number 15 pictures into Iowa State or whatever. I document shit like a nerd, but that's the way to fucking yeah, do yeah. it. I think. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. Is oh, I totally love- good keeping track uh melissa keen a uh, long time listener thank you melissa keen she says hey john um what would you like viewers to take away from your tv show the most great question melissa wow that's a great question melissa okay so yes what i want people to take from true north paranormal is their own opinion i don't do this to change people's minds and i don't do this to tell you my evidence is credible and it doesn't have holes i'll never do that that's that's a completely ignorant thing to think uh, what I want people to do is watch True North Paranormal and go, okay, so this is what John did in this particular area, and it worked for him. So what if we evolve that? That's kind of what I want people to take away. Form your own opinion. You know, see Ooh. see what I do and, and, you know, use it totally. I like that. See, I want, I, want, I want to do it, like I say, I'm selfish. I like to do it for me and look back and go, I went to that fucking place. But at the same time, if people can learn from it and, and go there and say, oh, Ad, not so much that I went there, but go, hey, Adam went to this cool spot that I like to check out. But if they can look at what we do there and learn from it and it either involve, I never thought of that. That's a great learning tool. We're a stepping stone, right? In all actuality, you want to yeah. be behind something, right? Totally, man. Yeah. And if I can, the way I see it is, is if I can go into a location and let's say I'm using something like a shadow tracker. Um, and I get some really great results. Well, I want someone to take that and run with it and evolve it and use their own mind to kind of do their own thing. 
you know, this worked for him. So what if we use this piece of tech along with this piece of tech to create this atmosphere, you know, X plus X equals Y, right? So, oh my God, I just used algebra. My math teacher is going to be so happy. <laughs> there goes our rating. People are starting to think on a yeah. Friday night. Beer's kicking in. Yeah, oh. What the fuck? I'm sorry, guys. I swear I'm not this nerdy. No, I'm kidding. I kind of am. I kind of am. Yeah, like, <laughs> I no, never dude, thought I'd use right. algebra. Oh, man, you've been so this. I, we got about five minutes left, six minutes left. Uh, so I'm going to go a little bit over even seven minutes left. You've been very informative, very talkative, and just very fun overall guests. It's not easy. Sometimes I feel like I'm pulling teeth, and i got to kind of dig for yeah. questions. I haven't had a lot from the group. Um, so I appreciate that a lot because you've been fucking fun to talk to. Um, I want to talk about something real quick. Do it. Um, does your does your girl, or do you in general? Do you guys? Oh, what am I gonna say? Hey, do do you use protection? Does she have sage? Do you guys do little re- re- prayers or readings? Do you? Work, um, you know, like, absolutely. Do you do? So water? we we follow. I mean, again, I I believe that because of the multitude of religions in the world, everyone's got their own process, their own religion, and I always tell people, your religion is your best defense. Uh, me, myself, I follow the same thing as the First Nations do. Uh, so I follow the medicine path. Um, so I go and I smudge myself before. Um, I have things that I do before where I, I talk to my ancestors and stuff like that and uh, ask them to walk beside me and protect me from anything. Uh, Karina is totally different. And we don't really, I know it sounds weird, but we don't really talk about what we do. Uh, Karina being a medium, I mean, you think about it, she sees dead people all the time. So I, I honestly, if it were me, I'd go nuts. I don't know how you shut that down. So I can't really speak for her. Um, yeah. but yeah, with, with me, that's kind of the process, right? Um, you know, but I, I do know other teams where, where they, they they themselves are, are Catholic. So they'll, they'll wear their cross that's been blessed and dipped in holy water. And, and you know what, dude, I, I totally think that's cool, but yeah, that's my way. And, and, you know, when I'm done, I again, go down to the water and I make sure I, I, you know, wash away everything that was there, and then I smudge again. And we definitely wow. use protection. So, so see, seriously, and I dig that because I'm like you. If a guy wants to come with a four leaf clover, if a guy wants to come with dirt from his basement, if a guy wants to come with nothing, whatever you believe in, whatever, like you said, like a cross, dude. I don't make fun of no one. What you know, what I mean, whatever you believe in, and you think protects you, more power to you. I don't, you know, also don't, totally. I don't come on me and start spraying your shit on me unless I say okay, but. For the most part, I let Heather do the la- I do the lavender, we do the sage. I wear my cross. I got my my urn around my neck with my mom's ashes in it. I know she'll protect me. She did yep. my car accident. I mean, I talked to her yep. in my car accident. I'll never forget that. And I think whatever works for you works for you. I love that answer, dude. You're fucking, that's killer. You're literally, you're the BC version of me. You're the British Columbia me. And I'm the <laughs> I'm the mean version of John Kazuska, man. Um, that's, that's right. You're like the American me and I'm the Canadian you, eh? Yeah, that's it, eh? Yeah, motherfucker. I get some that's, good that's right, eh? maple syrup and homegrown <laughs> beer. And we'll fucking. For sure. Man, man you, you got to see how tough way, it is. If you ever come up to like even like Georgia or something, please let me know or Philly or or I'll think. Oh man, for sure. Halfway. I'd love to hang out with you and crack open beer and just shoot the shit. I feel like we'd get some good stuff. It, it goes both ways, man. You're you're ever up in Canada. You make sure you let me know you're here, and I'll, I'll make sure I find a way to get to you. I appreciate that, man. If I can go to the Space Needle, I've never been there before. This is it Toronto, right? Toronto um, Space Needle, yeah. That's yeah, about two I days for me, but it's, now, it's okay. But whatever the fuck, I'll take a like King. I'll take a barrel over the fall. And just pick a side. There you go. <laughs> just go to go to Buffalo and take it over the Horseshoe Falls, man. I'll fucking jump on John Candy's Mountie horse. I watch the movies. I love Canadian bacon. I'm fucking good, man. I, <laughs> That's Beget, right. motherfucker. That's right. My name is Bege the Faslet. My grandfather's called me Faslet, means ugly face. He's got the Faslet. The Tene. I mean, you said you were you, you said you, you were kind of French, right? So all you gotta oh, do yeah, is like 80%, you know, shit like that. Yeah, yeah uh, just walk up and go, oh, pardon, pardon, je parle pas anglais, je parle français un petit peu aussi. Yeah, looking for, <laughs> you looking for fromage, fromage de poutine, I mean. That's right. There you yeah. go. Yeah, that's right. Poutine. Dude, I need poutine now. Thanks. Oh, that's good shit. I get to do the day's cheese curds and gravy and fries over here. Dice oh, 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 in my pants. I go, this is fucking orgasm food. Pretty yeah, good that's stuff. That's good stuff. Good. That's, stuff. Where I get my, that's where I get my beer and wrestling from. My grandfather used to watch wrestling from uh, Conrad Bijan. He used to go, hit him referee, turn around, look at him, smack him. One, two, three. Unbelievable. <laughs> what him do here? And I just would sit there and laugh. Why does he talk like that? You know what I mean? And I just yeah. love wrestling. I'm like a fucking. That's cool, man. I love it. And I love Canada. Canada, honestly, is people give them shit. They go Canadians. It's cold. Polar bears, the whole nine. But, dude, yeah, yeah. Canada's, especially Montreal, 
from why in St. George there are, I can imagine your area with the history and its lore. Do you ever see yourself ever really leaving the grounds of, of, of BC or Canada? Like for, I mean, well, I, I mean, for me, right? man, I, yeah, I, I grew up in central Canada and Winnipeg, like I was saying, and as much as I love Winnipeg, I, I live in the mountains now and there's something about when you walk outside in the mountains, like I, I literally, I'll have to send you a picture, but I'll show you what my backyard is. It's nothing but a forest, man. Like there's something about being on a mountain with the forest as your backyard. Uh, man, I will never leave BC, never leave BC. Oh, I love man. it so much here. I'm going to fit my leg. Yeah, I'll send you a picture, Adam. <laughs> I'm going to come yeah, yeah. up with a big <laughs> Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll go ahead and we'll build you an igloo and I'll make sure you have a dog sled, eh? Son of a bitch. I love this guy. <laughs> so, so, hey, man, we got a couple. We're, we're right at the time, but let's go about five over. We did a little late. I want you to give a quick shout out. I know we did it earlier, but we get some late listeners here. Thank you guys for tuning in late and still listening. Um, where can people find the great work of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Kazuka? What's both? Plug your wife's shit. Well, you can find you guys, the, you can, on YouTube. Well, well, you can find us at uh, facebook.com slash true north paranormal. Uh, you can check us out on Paraflix again, such an amazing, amazing thing to be a part of some great teams. And Natalie Jones is hands down the most raddest CEO ever. Um, you can check us out on YouTube though. It is old content. Don't judge us. I swear to God, I was so green in front of the camera. Um, you know, places like that. So, I mean, yeah, for sure. And Spotify for your music. What's the handle? That's on that? right. If you're, if I'm to- I totally forgot. If you're looking for atmosphere uncaged, which is kind of my goodbye to music, and, and again, it's got so many great people on the song, That Damn Devil. So I'd encourage anyone to listen to it, at least for that song. You'll be able to find that in Spotify come October. Perfect. And uh, Thunder Boys Productions, Inc. Incorporated. B-O-Y-Z. That's right. Thunder Boys. Thunder Boys. That's right. Uh, Dean Trumbly. The guy's amazing. The guy's Perfect. a wizard when, awesome. real, when I really think about it. Yeah. That's awesome. And they're on the Facebook page, too, right on there. Of course, you get a little bit of YouTube uh, going on, and just stay tuned. Paraflix, of course, is up and coming, and people can find you right on that, of course, which is killer, dude. Absolutely. Season two and three are coming soon, so, you know, better episodes of True North on the way, I promise. Ah, that's good to know. That's good to know. Awesome. Um, so anything that we need to talk about? Anything I forgot? Anything you want to mention before we go off? I, I'm not sure, man. I think we pretty much covered it over the hour. I mean, we're we're pretty all over the place. I mean... You know, I'm, I'm just going to say that's the Canadian excited in me going all over the place like that. You know, Well, that's cool. People tell me they dig the energy because I don't just I, don't, I honestly, dude, I free ball this shit. I don't have any questions right now. I know the team. Oh, the best way. Honestly, and I just let my ADHD roll because I love to shoot the shit, smoke a joint yeah, yeah. A beer too, and talk to my friends. And that's why I wanted you on. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you soon about have, coming on possibly November ish. If it's possible yeah, on Tuesday for you and your old lady to both come on my visual podcast. For sure. You just let me know when you want it, Adam. And, uh, I'm there anytime, bud. Anytime. This guy is literally like when he, I needed someone to cry to just about bullshit in life. He was there. Um, he, he may not do it to all of you. He's not exactly a shrink. But he, what I'm saying is he's a good dude. <laughs> and he's, <laughs> he's someone you want to know. And he's doing great stuff. And you're very humble. But you've got a lot, a lot of stuff. It's been a busy year. It's going to continue to be a busy year now that COVID's gone. And 2023 looks bright for you, my friend. Am I right? I mean, it really does. Absolutely. Absolutely, brother. It's, it's, I mean, it's only up from here. I mean, restrictions, easing, music coming out, you know, some really rad locations. Yeah. I think Love 2023 that. is going to be epic. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much to my guest, John Kazuska from, uh, like you said, he's all over the place. He's um, got his hand and everything. And I love that. Uh, very humble dude. So thank you guys for uh, listening to Historians, Historically Haunted Show, Paranormal King Network. This will be on YouTube, Spotify, Anchor FM. Um, I had a bunch of fruity little stuff. Paranormal King Rotation. And um, we're going to have John back. So, John, say have a good night to everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, brother. Sounds good, brother. Till next time. Keep it creepy. Yeah, the boy. I love this guy. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks, Ross. Paranormal King Radio Network. Thanks, historians. Historically Haunted Show.
Hello, this is Adam Began, and I'm the host of Historically Haunted Show, where I talk about some very rare historical and haunted locations that I visited. I also interview some of the very best in the paranormal and cryptozoology field. So tune in every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Paranormal King Radio Network and prepare to be educated about the unknown. <laughs>